ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمرهم والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العليم Respected scholars, my elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This ayah that I just quoted from Surah Al-Tawbah, ayah number 24, it is in line with the theme of the Friday khutbah where we talk about taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is God consciousness. And this is in line with that God consciousness cannot crystallize unless and until we have that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in this ayah, in kana aba'akum, if your fathers, tell them, O Prophet, if your fathers, or your sons, or your brothers, all your wives, spouses, or your tribe, or the wealth that you have acquired, or your trade that you are worried or fearing that it's going to go in a loss, or your beautiful houses that you love, if all these things are dearer to you, more loving to you, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet and striving in the way of Allah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes his tone and says, فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهُ Then wait. Wait. If all this is too good, interesting, loving, wait. Until Allah says, I will bring about my addict. Allahu la Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide those who are fasting. Our topic today is love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah is very scary. This ayah tells us that there are dire consequences. When Allah says, wait and see, it is not easy for us to digest. It is only Him who will decide how and when and what He will do. But is love by force? Is love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the storm that he says it is a must? Can we, have, can we love somebody without free will? We're forced to love. Not possible. Love is by choice. Love is a free will. Why am I saying this ayah here? Love is spontaneous. It just comes. Why then Allah says this? Psychologists say that listen, when somebody is generous and somebody is magnanimous, for your information, who is a magnanimous person? Magnanimous person is somebody whom against whom you keep on hurting, you keep on faulting, you keep on doing bad to him, you keep on not respecting him. He keeps on ignoring it and still likes you and still is generous to you. Remember one thing, it is but natural to love such a person. Unfortunately, it is rare to find such a person who is so magnanimous and so generous. Mullah Ibn Taqiyan Ali Ibn Abi Talib Salawatullahi wa Salaamu Alaikum. Remember one thing, generosity and magnanimity enslaves the person. We become slaves of the person who is magnanimous and generous. That's natural. This is how human hearts are. Use a stick, he won't love you. Use kind words with generosity, forgive him. Keep on accepting his mistakes, keep on embracing him and keep on loving you. You want to rule the world? Rule it, Imam Ali al-Islam is saying, but with these two things. Be magnanimous, be forgiving, be generous. The whole world will be under your feet. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't forget the ayah that I mentioned. Can we deny the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
Can we deny what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done? Can we forget that he has kept on forgiving us for all the faults of others? Can we forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite us sinning day in day out, morning, afternoon, night, despite us breaking each and every law that we want to break, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still loves us, still favors on us. I still you see some of us do complain. <coughs> Why Allah doesn't love me? Why does he love him? Why does he favor him? Why is he giving him so much I don't have? Why he has this, I don't have this? Why he is favored with this, I'm not favored with that? We keep on complaining, it's just like the child standing up in front of the mother and says, Mom, why do you love my brothers and sisters so much more than me? The mom will say, with tears in her eyes, Son, my child, you are as loving to me. <coughs> you are as loving to me. All of these, your brothers and sisters, they're all same. It is the same. I see you, I see them with the same eye. My love is the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us that much. Anybody here can claim, can stand up and say, Today, I was sick. Allah gave me. I was hurt. Allah did not find a way out to give me happiness. I was poor. Allah did not make me rich. I was unknown. Allah did not make me known. I was ignorant. Allah did not guide me. How many favors has He blessed on us? <laughs> Which favors will you deny? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us. Now, with all those favors, being so magnanimous, each and every sin, he is standing up to forgive us. Each and every mistake, he is ready to overlook us. He is finding an excuse for us to go to heaven. That Allah, who is so generous with everything, we can't love him. If we still think that Allah does not love us, and I'll give you a small method, a small procedure, a small act. When your heart is heavy, the problems in the business, when the problems at home, when the problems with the children, when the problems in the community, and your heart feels so heavy, you can't find solutions, find a corner. Sit in a corner, find the mosque corner, or the corner at home, when you keep your musalla, sit on that corner and start to whisper from the depths of your heart, Ya Allah, have you abandoned me? Ya Allah, have you left me alone? Ya Allah, is my heart so contaminated? Ya Allah, has my heart hardened? Oh Allah, for a few minutes you talk to him in any language. He doesn't want Arabic. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your love. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him, Allah. Don't change me. You leave me like this. Is my heart so hard that I can't get your blessings? I can't get your favor to soften my heart? I can assure you at the same very moment you see a tear coming down. When that tear comes down, and when you feel the heat in your heart, you should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sitting next to you. That is love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all have it. It's just that we have to recognize that love in us. Because our religion is nothing but love. Our fifth Imam says this religion is nothing but love. There is no room, not a single iota room of hatred unless Allah tells you to hate somebody he hates. Otherwise there is no room for hatred. It's only love. Love is religion. Religion is love. As for the hadith of the fifth Imam. That is the kind of love Allah wants. When we have our beloved in front of us or we hear the name of our beloved, our hearts leave. Our hearts miss a beat. That's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. That your hearts leave. That your hearts 
Mr. Beat, Surah Anfal, Ayah number 2 Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَ Mu'min, people of the faith are those, when my name is mentioned, their hearts tremble, their hearts tremble. This is love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When our beloved asks us, especially to the youth, when you are young, please, I want to test your love. Bring the stars down, this will be the stars. What stars you tell me, I walk up to Nairobi to prove it. Walking alone. If you still don't believe me, I'll swim across the Indian Ocean. You believe me. Allah does not want the stars down. Allah does not want anything from the top. He is the one who has created. He has given only one criteria of his love. And he says in Surah Al Imran, ayah number 31, Kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni yuhibbikum Allah wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. You want to know Allah's Prove it to me that you love me. Follow my prophet. Follow me. Follow my path. Simple. I don't want the stars. You just love me. You follow me. It is for me. You don't bring the stars down. You ask me, love me, I'll split the moon for you. You love me, I'll delay the sun to set for Ali ibn Abi Talib. You love me, I'll cool the fire of Namrud for Ibrahim. You love me, I'll make you walk in the sea like Musa alayhi salam. You love me, I'll keep you alive in the minds and the hearts of the people for decades and centuries to come. Salu ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa Submission to his love and his will. In Hadith Al-Qudsi, finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Dawood, tell them, inform the people of the earth, I love one who loves me. I love one who loves me. Love is two ways. Love cannot be one way. You love somebody and it's a death, it's a wall, it can't be possible. It will reciprocate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love one who loves me. I sit with one who sits with me. I am inclined towards the one who is inclined towards my remembrance. I choose one who chooses me. Tell them, Dawood, when he calls me, I will respond, I will answer. When he asks for me, I will give without condition, unconditional. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He inspires us the fortune of becoming His lovers. Inna ahsan al hadith wa abdal al mawridah kitab Allah. A'udhu billahi min al shaytan al rajim. Bismillahi al rahman al rahim. Wal asr. Inna al insan la fi khus. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu al salihati wa tawa saw bil haqqi wa tawa saw bil sabr. سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبا وبسط اليدين بالرحمة نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحكمه ونشهد أن محمد نبيه وحبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين بعده رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعدة الحسنة 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بالتوبه عما سلف من ذنوبكم والانابه عن الاوزار التي ادخلت ظهوركم فانه تعالى كريم بكم رؤوف عليكم يقبل اليسير ويعفو عن الكثير اما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس اهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد this week and probably the next three weeks we have ayam fatimiya or جناب فاطمة الزهراء سلام الله عليها اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد من شيخ عباس امي from various historians that her death occurred 75 days after the holy prophet صلى الله عليه واله وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد for probably on the 13th 14th or the 15th of jamad al awwal and in some other sources he quotes other historians and he says that probably she died 95 days after the death of the father and that would coincide with third jamaat al akhir that we normally commemorate but worldwide in so many places they have three weeks of ayyam ulama ikram the scholars when they were asked about this death of janab fatima al akhir alayhi salam when did she die is it the 13th or is it the third should we commemorate on the 13th should we commemorate on the third of jamaat al akhir all of them all of them say these days are ayyam the way the ayyam of muharram is. the way in the holy month of muharram we remember the sacrifices of imam said alayhi salam these are the ayyam of janab fatima al zahra it is her sacrifices that today you and i are sitting here listening to this khutbah of Jumu'ah. She stood up in front of the Muslimin in that mosque. She gave her khutbah. She stood up in front of the whole ummah. She was brave and courageous. 18-year-old, a tender girl of 18-year-old, she was actually on her asa, an old lady with a bent back. A door thrown on her, the house lit on fire. This was the Masaiq of Janabi Fatima. Imagine 75 days, 95 days maximum. Can a person age in those many days? This is something we have to visualize, we have to understand. Janabi Fatima went through a lot. That is why she said, if my troubles and the tortures that she was mentally tortured, emotionally tortured. Father was just the name. Father was not given to her because of the Imam of Imam Ali al Islam. If they would have given Father, they would have to give Imam of Imam Ali al Islam. All this she bore 75 days, 95 days until she becomes old. Possible? That's Jannah Fatima. We have to understand what she went through. Janabi Fatima salam, Allah chose the name Fatima. Do you know why Fatima? And I'm quoting one hadith from Abu Huraira and Abi Huraira Kala in Nama Sumiya Fatima to Fatima, Lianna Allah Ta'ala Fatima, Mana Hattaha Minana. Why I've quoted this so that our brothers also can go home with this and others who need some more references. I have brought more references of this hadith that Allah named her Fatima. Because she can become a Fatima, she will save those who are her lovers from the fire of hell. This is Fatima. That is why the Ayyama used to give wasila of Janabi Fatima when they raised their hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Fatima. She was not the mother of Hassanain, no. She was the mother of the full Ayyama. That is why Kawthar Surah Kawthar was brought down for her. She was not the one who did not have children. We are known by the fathers. It is only one Fatima on this earth who had a generation of Masumin under her name. Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That is why she was also named Muhaddafa. Why? 
Because the angels used to come down from the skies that jostle with each other. No, I will go and talk to her. No, I will go and talk to her. The angels would like to talk to her. This was Fatima Zahra And we, the Ummah, do this to her. They were looking for the chance. When will I get the chance to talk to Fatima? That is why she is called Muhaddatha. The only person after the Prophet who talked to the angels, this lady, is known as Fatima to Zahra. Oh! 